I say, for some reason I feel a little bit anxious and I have been trying to put my finger on why and I don't really know why, but I wanted to come here today partly because of this anxiety that I've been feeling lately of, um, and it's really kind of rooted in the reason that I'm here at this school. And, um, you know, Buddhism basically talks about the root of all suffering is a misperception of our reality. And I really like this idea. This is something that um, I love because it's, it's so profound. That, and one of the things about chiropractic is that it's about seeing the beauty in the world. That there's nothing wrong with us as human beings. That sickness is just a reaction to our environment. And that we are empowered to be able to change that environment and change our health. And so one of the things that has been kind of a common theme throughout my life is you know, I've, honestly, I've really struggled in school. I've had the history of dyslexia, the label of dyslexia, throughout my family, myself. I've, um, you know, I've gone to very like good schools, but I've always had a hard time in school. And that was probably one of the reasons that it took me a long time to, to come back to chiropractic, even though I knew that I wanted to be a healer since I was little. Um, and so what I'm basically talking about today is how to be an expert, how to manifest what you want your vision to be in the world. And so for me, it's a very personal um, talk because I've, it's, you know, school has been something that's been so hard for me. So coming to this uh, university or, or college has been something that is very fright, frightening to me because, um, you know, I've, I've literally I've, I've struggled in some of my classes. And, um, and so for me, I, I started studying on like, what are the people that are really mastering the subjects and maybe had learning disabilities before, but then really overcame them? And what were the things that they did? And it led me to a few stories that I really love. And one of them is of Khan Academy. Who's heard of Khan Academy? Probably all of us. So one of the, the wonderful stories I love about Khan Academy that really resonated with me was the fact that Khan started, because he was an analyst, he was a financial analyst, he started analyzing all his data of these people going throughout school and how their progress was. And he said basically there's two types of students. You have straight A students that basically catch on like this. They go straight to the top of the class. And then you have the kids that maybe are struggling, struggling, struggling. And those are the kids that a lot of times are the dropouts or the people with learning disabilities or the people with ADD or you know, whatever their label is that they struggle. But the great thing I love about Khan is he said, if you give them the right environment, if you change the environment to cater to where those areas where they're lacking, all of a sudden, they go from the bottom of the class to the top of the class. And it's just a matter of changing the environment. And I love that because it's really, for me, a chiropractic symbol of there's nothing wrong with us as human beings when we're sick. It's just a matter of changing the environment. And so for me, I've been on this personal journey that's been very confronting, being in a place that's super challenging for me, having to do a shitload of multiple choice tests that are, you know, testing me on the minutia that I'm really not interested in. And so, um, you know, so I, I came across other books, Napoleon Hill is another one, Think and Grow Rich. And one of the main ideas he talks about is specialized knowledge. And he talks, there, there's one scene in there where he talks about being challenged in court, where he had to go to court, and they basically try to make him look ignorant. And they started asking all these questions about, you know, little trivia. He said, why would I want to fill my brain with that crap? This is, you know, is, is this really the specialized knowledge, this applied knowledge of what I need to know? And so he basically talks about his whole system of how he basically not just learns information, but then applies it to things and also surrounds himself with a group of people that can support him on his mission and vision. And so then I came to this, the five S's of leadership within education and learning that for me is very powerful. And I think it really fits within chiropractic and the healing profession. And it's really, it starts with service. So it's about giving back. So it's about, you know, going out and, and just, you know, giving information to people, uh, giving care to people, whatever it is. And so if we desire to be experts in our field, service is extremely important. And you see people that are super successful, they have given a lot of service. They've gone out and they've served the community. They've served the people. 
they have had an impact on people, people's lives. Even if they charge money. I mean, look at Bill Gates. Bill Gates is super, super wealthy. Part of the reason is if you look around the world, how many people have been affected by his programs? Lots of people, billions of people. He's a multi-billionaire. So one of the things I love in that, that statement is that if we want to be more successful in our lives, have more service in our lives, affect more people in whatever way it is. If it's giving things, if it's you know having an equal exchange or trade of things, then service is so important. The next thing is specialized knowledge. And this is really what I want to hammer in on. So specialized knowledge is um, something that is applied knowledge. So it's not just the, the theoretical. The theoretical and the philosophy is super important. But how do we apply that? How is our philosophy and understanding and knowledge applied and congruent with our actions? Because people see that congruency and that becomes more inspiring. So that people can be a part of our vision and our purpose. So there's a story about specialized knowledge that I love, and it's of John D. Martini. So John D. Martini is this chiropractor who has been very inspiring to me because he also had a learning disability and really struggled in school. He actually failed high school. And then he went on to be one of the brightest individuals and speakers, I think, in the world. And, um, and so what he did is he basically, he realized, he basically became a surf bomb. And he um, got super ill. And he ate some plants that had some strychnine in it and basically almost died. And someone dragged him into this office, Paul Bragg, who's this leading nutritionalist. And so Paul Bragg basically um, believed in this guy and brought him back to health, even though so he saw the innate potential in this individual. And so as he was coming back to his health, to health, he basically was leading this guided meditation on purpose and vision. And so this purpose and vision, he basically had all these people, 50 or 60 people, in a guided meditation where he, he came up and he said, I, today we're going to go and look at your purpose and vision in life. And at the end of that 15, 20 minute meditation, everyone in the room was crying because Paul Bragg had so much confidence that everyone in the room had a purpose and vision unique to themselves that was beautiful in itself, that everyone had seen that confidence and had basically seen the vision and meditated on their purpose and vision in life. And they were crying at the end of it. And I love that story. And so, um, Johnny Martini basically went on to become, uh, you know, he saw the, the impact of the brain and the map on the brain on TMJ. And he said, well, if such a large part of the brain is dedicated to TMJ, I'm going to be an expert in this. And so what he did is he basically went to the dental school and said, how do I become an expert in TMJ? And they said, well, you just read these books, and then you become an expert. And so he, he basically took those books, and he read like 50 books. And so he realized that to get a PhD in something, to become one of the eminent experts in something, if you read 60 or 50 books in that topic, you're going to be one of the world experts on that topic. And so that's what he did. He just read those books. And this is while he was a, I think, freshman or sophomore in chiropractic college. And then all of a sudden, people started asking him, hey, can you speak about TMJ? So he started speaking to... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200, all of a sudden he's speaking at world conferences on TMJ as a freshman and sophomore in, in chiropractic college. So I love this idea that, you know, declaring what you want to be an expert in, and then going out in the world and then serving people. And so, I just want to close basically. So the next few stages of um, the five stages of leadership are speaking. So specialized knowledge, speaking, selling and saving. So, went over specialized knowledge, and then um, speaking is obviously a really important thing. How do we communicate our vision and purpose so we can inspire people to get along on that? Not that they have to um, totally, you know, buy into everything we say, or, or, or um, but, but that they, we inspire them with their own innate um, vision and purpose to come along with us, to be a part of that, to join forces. And then with um, saving is obviously important so that how are we amassing and working together and cooperating? In my last talk, I talked a lot about cooperative finance and how we can come together to increase our power as chiropractors to go along with our purpose and vision. And so I just challenge you today to, as you go out in the world, to define yourself as what do you really want your specialized knowledge to be? What do you want to be an expert in? Do two-minute videos online. And this is something that I'm, I'm working on is 
is working on these little videos and and putting them together and putting them out on the net and then um, referring to friends and, and, and other people that are experts in other fields. Because working together we can accomplish a huge amount of stuff. So I want to thank you all very much and um, thank you for being here with a little bit of my anxiety. And uh, love you guys all and uh, thank you.